Dearly beloved in Christ, on the 13th Sunday, in ordinary time, you see, the word of God beckons on us to deeply reflect on the implications of Christian discipleship. A discipleship that is the greatest calling on earth. Christian discipleship has far reaching implications. So, having assembled here this evening, the Word of God invites us to reflect on the implication of who we are as Christians, what our calling entails. It is the greatest calling, so we should be excited by the fact that our calling is the highest. Our religion is the true religion. Our faith is the most authentic. Again, to whom much is given, much is expected. So as we celebrate the magnitude of our calling as Christians, we necessarily need to appreciate the implications of this calling. Having been called, we should understand that as disciples, we no longer belong to ourselves. We have lost the ownership of ourselves. We belong to the one whom we follow. We are not going to do what we want again, but what he wants us to do. We are not going to go to where we want to go to, but where Christ wants us to go to. This is a significant implication. The two readings today buttress this point. They highlight to us the fact that our calling is great, so too our response is enemies. The demands on us, God's expectation on Christians are very high. When we are called, there is need to prioritize. And in prioritizing God's kingdom, his word necessarily has to be a priority. We probably wondered why the gospel was being read. How all of a sudden, the most merciful savior, our Lord Jesus Christ appeared or sounded very indifferent, as though burying the dead was no longer a corporal work of mercy. But there is a strong message here we need to pay attention to. He does not in any way discourage us from good relationship with our uh, relatives, nor is he saying that burying the dead is no longer a corporal work of mercy. He is simply telling us that first things first. Before any other thing on earth, we should acknowledge who we are as Christians and prioritizing God ahead of everything in this world. In prioritizing God, we do not neglect other responsibilities. In acknowledging that we are Christians first, 
We add greater value to the society we belong. For it is only when we are good Christians that we can be good lawyers, that we can be good judges, that we can be good doctors, that we can be good teachers. So when we follow Christ, he teaches us how to be at our best. Following him makes us more and more relevant in whatever society, in whatever community, in whatever group we belong. That is our celebration today. That is the message. That we come to him, we prioritize him. For this is what our call to discipleship entails. God first. So that we can be at our best in our respective responsibilities. This is quite consistent with what Christ said when he visited two sisters, Mary and Martha. Both of them were wonderful. They sought to attend to his needs. Mary listened to him while Martha was all busy preparing meals make it, with the intention of making him comfortable. It was not enough that Martha went to the extra mile to make him comfortable. He be, she began to complain. Why am I left alone to do this? My sister is not helping. And at that point, Christ had to teach her how to prioritize. It is fine that you are welcoming me, that you seek to make me comfortable physically, but it is Mary that has taken the better part because in listening to me, she is in a better position to satisfy my need. Don't we usually inquire, first of all, before giving people gifts, what exactly do they need? That was what Mary did, and Christ praised her for. So in this world, there are multiple of things to be attended to. But as Christians, we must understand that we have a duty to prioritize and to know which is the greatest, the, which is to come first. In economics, they call something the scale of preference. We are in a number of things to purchase. You have a hierarchy. The one that is topmost is to be attended to before the lesser ones. No activity in this world is greater than spreading the good news of the Lord. And for us to be involved in spreading the good news, we need to necessarily follow. For it is in following that we can be sent. In the first reading today, we, we see a man in the person of Elisha who was also called. In that call, he needed to part with everything he had in order to be focused completely on the things of heaven. He prioritized God's work to his own work which he was doing. So today we are celebrating the need to completely detach so that we can be better attached to God. And by the time we are attached to God, we can improve the world we belong to. 
Three days ago, there was a landmark judgment. What seemed very impossible, all of a sudden, became possible because those involved, the judges of the Supreme Court, abided with the Christian principles. If we should look at their resume, their qualifications, maybe they are not the most qualified. Probably we've had more learned, more intelligent judges in that position before them, but they stand out today. They have given a verdict that liberates their conscience for as long as abortion is in perpetuation, there is a, a guilt. They freed their conscience, and in this freedom which they enjoy, they liberate others. That is the focus of the second reading, that the freedom should not be about self-indulgence, but the freedom that Christ brings expands if we free ourselves and we embrace holiness. Not only those who are born now have the right to live. The verdict has made it possible for those in the womb as well. That is authentic freedom. That is the freedom that proceeds from truth and, and love. Dearly beloved in Christ, we find ourselves in different disciplines. Seated and standing here are people who are professionals. We are gifted in various ways for us to perform maximally, for us to be at our best. We necessarily have to submit to the Christian principles. In the Gospel text again, Christ talks to someone whom he calls, and the person tells him, let me first go and say goodbye to my family, then I will follow. And he says, you put your hand on the, floor, on the plow and you look back, you are no longer fit for the kingdom. This is a strong message to you and I, that Christianity does not have vacation. Any time we vacate from our Christian duties, we are in danger of missing out completely. There should be no procrastination too, because very often we are sure this is what is right, but we keep it to the future. A seminarian will say, oh, I'm not yet a priest. I have all the time. I'll be at my best when I become a priest. But reality, experience has shown that the discipline that you refuse to cooperate with as a seminarian, you, even when ordained a priest, you struggle with it. There are persons who say, oh, I will be at my best, I will be more prayerful, I will be more committed to church activities. When I am married, now that I'm single, let me, have, let me enjoy myself. Procrastination. If you give in to immorality as a single, there, are more, there is more tendency for someone who is loose as a single to also be loose in marriage. So that someone who is a fornicator as a single person we we'll still struggle with adultery because of the foundation. The kingdom of God is to be responded to with a sense of urgency. This is the message today. If we are convinced that Christ is worth following, the followership should be now and not tomorrow. May the good Lord help us that in following Christ, we do not reduce our relevance, but 
we increase our relevance in the world. He wants to add value to us if we submit to him. Like these great judges, we too will be this impactful in our world if we submit to him completely.